question. Welcome to the August 16th, 2022 meeting. As a reminder, please turn your mics on and clearly state your name before you speak to ensure that members of the audience can hear you. And please remember to mute your mic when you are not speaking, especially if you're me. <laughs> because this is a virtual meeting, a roll call vote will be taken for each action item on today's agenda. As a reminder, phone only attendees will need to press star mute to, excuse me, star six to unmute yourself. We will now begin the meeting with a roll call of all members. Thank you, Chair. I'll begin roll call. Grant Anderson. Here. Thank you. Mario Brown. Here. Thank you. Stephen Chang. Chair Conclu. Here, thank you. Thank you. Sasha Pachito, proxy for Jason Crampton. Here. Thank you. Stephen Esther. I'm here, thank you. Thank you. Allison Feliz. Here. Thank you. Brandon Forey. Present. Thank you. Tiffany Halperin. Tara Harmon. I'm, oh. I'm here, Tiffany Halperin. Sorry, I wasn't able to unmute. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tara Harmon. I'm present, thank you. Thank you. Jason Harris. Here. Thank you. Jim Johansson. Here. Thank you. Uh, Reed Kempton. Here. Thank you. I believe Jeff King is not here today. Lisa Danka, proxy for Clem Lagaki. I'm here, thank you. Thank you. Daniel Loftus. Jose Macias. Present. Thank you. Christine McMurdy. I'm here. Thank you. Mark Millstone. Okay. Randy Proach. Here. Thank you. Earl Ratledge. Okay. Patrick Sage. Okay. Um, Kelsey Chatnick. Here. Thank you. Ward Stanford. Garrett Topham. Here. Thank you. Justin Weldy. Present. Thank you. Nathan Williams. I'm here. Thank you. And Robert Yabez. Here. Thank you. That was roll call. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item two, call to the audience. An opportunity for public comment on the agenda was provided ahead of this meeting. MAG staff, have you received any public comments? Uh, yes, I have. Actually, this comment came in on uh, May 17th during the committee meeting. And this comment is from Earl Ratledge from Mesa, Arizona. And I'll read his comment. During the discussion about bicycle lanes at the May 17th 2022 active transportation meeting, someone mentioned that the League of American Bicyclists recommends that all streets with motor traffic speeds greater than 35 miles per hour have separated bike lanes. This is a US Department of Transportation Federal Highway Administration recommendation. The, Nas uh, excuse me, the National Association of City Transportation Officials recommends protected bike lanes at speeds higher than 26 miles per hour. As for Avondale's concern that people are riding bikes on the sidewalk rather than in bike lanes, I suggest that it is not an education issue. I suggest that there is something about the bicycle facility that prevents people from feeling safe riding there. It's the end of comment. Thank you. Um, if we needed to, or if we wanted to see that written somewhere, would that be 
put with um, that meeting in the record or can you forward that to the committee? I'm happy to forward that to the committee. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, moving on to item number three, transportation staff report. Kay Bork, transportation planning project manager will provide us with a report. Um, go ahead. Thank okay, thank you, Chair, committee members. As you know, Meg is working closely with our policymakers to evaluate alternatives and options as a result of Governor Ducey's veto of enabling legislation, House Bill 2685. The impacts of the veto are not just to future investment plan, not just to the future investment plan, but also put at risk our current Proposition 400 programs. Meg's staff gave a presentation on the consequences of the veto to a joint session of Transportation Policy Committee and Regional Council in the last few weeks, and most recently to the Management Committee on August 10th. All of these presentations can be viewed on YouTube. However, if there is interest from the committee, uh, we can provide the presentation uh, to the Active Transportation Committee. Next, uh, Meg would like to congratulate Phoenix on their RAISE grant award for the construction of the Third Street Bicycle and Pedestrian Bridge across the Rio Salado River. And uh, we'd also like to remind the committee that this project actually began as a design assistance project. So uh, great job to the Active Transportation Committee for prioritizing this uh, very important project for funding. Uh, I'd also like to let you know that staff are evaluating the design assistance program for ways to improve the process, including the scoring process, looking at the evaluation criteria, project eligibility requirements, and the actual project management process after projects are awarded funding. Uh, I will be bringing recommendations to the committee for your review and approval over the next uh, coming months, and this is in preparation for the fiscal year 2024 call for projects. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Congratulations to Phoenix. <laughs> Can't wait to see that project take shape. Moving on to agenda item four, approval of consent agenda. We do have two items on the consent agenda, which is item 4A, approval of the May 17, 2022 meeting minutes and 4B, approval of the June 6, 2022 Active Transportation and Transit Committee Joint Meeting Minutes. Uh, does anyone have any changes before we uh, would ask for a motion to approve consent item 4A? Motion to approve. Second, Robert Yabit. Okay, was that Justin making the motion? Justin yeah. Weldy? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Robert, and Robert Yabez, second. Kay will do okay. a roll call vote of everyone participating, so please indicate how you vote. Grant Anderson? Aye. Mariel Brown? Yes. Chair Conclu? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Sasha Pachito? Aye. Stephen Esther? Yes. Allison Feliz? Yes. Brandon Forey? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Tiffany Halperin? Tara Harmon? Aye. This is Tiffany Halperin. I'm a yes, but I also didn't know that I respond to this. Sorry. Okay. It's my understanding that you would not respond when the committee is taking action on other items, but thank you. I'll take note of that. Jason Harris? Aye. Jim Johansson? Aye. Reed Kempton. Aye. And I'll skip the non-voting members. Uh, now I'll request um, uh, Daniel Loftus. He's not present. Jose Macias. 
That, I mean, yes. Thank you. Christine McMurdy. Aye. Thank you. Randy Proach. Aye. Kelsey Shatnick. Aye. Garrett Topham. Aye. Justin Weldy. Aye. Nathan Williams. Yes. Thank you. And Robert Yabez. Aye. Thank you. And did I miss anyone who is now present? Mark Millstone is here, and I'm a yes. Thank you. Okay, with a motion and a second, this motion passes. Are, does anyone have any changes or edits or questions about item 4B? Seeing none, unless I'm not seeing a hand raised, um, we'll ask for a motion to approve. Christine McMurdy, so moved. Thank you. And a second? Second, Anderson. So we have um, a motion and a second. Kay will do a roll call vote for this item. Please indicate how you vote. Excuse me, Chair, I was unable to determine who made the second. Oh, I think that was Grant Anderson. Correct. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, roll call, Grant Anderson. Aye. Mario Brown. Yes. Chair Conclu. Yes. Sasha Pachito. Yes. Stephen Esther. Yes. Allison Feliz. Yes. Brandon Forey. Aye. Tara Harmon. Aye. Jason Harris. Aye. Thank you. Jim Johansson. Aye. Reed Kempton. Aye. Jose Macias. Aye. Thank you. Christine McMurdy. Aye. Mark Millstone. Aye. Thank you. Randy Proach. Aye. Thank you. Kelsey Shatnick. Aye. Garrett Topham. Aye. Justin Weldy. Aye. Nathan Williams. Aye. And Robert Yavez. Aye. Thank you. Okay, with a motion and a second, this motion passes. Moving on to agenda item number five. This will be presented by Kay Bork. MAG Transportation Planning Project Manager, and the Town of Gila Bend. This item is on the agenda for action. Thank you, Chair and Committee members. Uh, this next agenda item for Active Transportation Committee action is a second project deferral request from the Town of Gila Bend for their Gila Bend Unified School District Walkable Bikeable Perimeter Project. In August of 2017, the town applied for two projects associated with improving the areas around the town's public schools. And the first was a Safe Routes to School study and the second being this project. Uh, the Safe Routes to School project was a framework to study the, or to identify the gaps in sidewalks, determine location of missing signs, inadequate shade and issues related to crosswalks and ADA compliance. The city's first project deferral request was approved at the April 28, 2021 MAG Regional Council meeting. And this was at the recommendation of MAG staff. Um, in March, 2021, MAG staff recommended deferring all fiscal year 2021 safe routes to school studies to fiscal year 2022 due to delays related to the COVID pandemic. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Uh, the second project deferral request is due to a delay in the actual Safe Routes to School study that was the basis for the first deferral. And this uh, project was not able to get underway until March of 2022 uh, due to a delay in project authorization. The MEG federal fund, uh, federal fund programming guidelines and procedures uh, do not require action for a, a first time deferral, but a second deferral does require the project sponsor to successfully complete an appeals process, which includes presentations through the MAG committee process. And in that process, the agency is required to identify and explain the issues that have caused the delay. And then the issues also must be beyond the control of the agency. The second project deferral and the scope modifications requested by the city of Gila Bend are in accordance with the MAG federal funding programming guidelines. Uh, that concludes my presentation. And if there are no questions, I'd like to turn it over to Kathy Valenzuela from the town of Gila Bend for their presentation. Thank you. And I am not sure if Kathy is on the line. Chair, I don't see that Kathy is participating at the moment. Okay, yeah, I was just trying to see if she was one of the phone numbers, maybe. Yeah. That would need to unmute. Um, let's see. Okay, if they're not here to present, we can move on to the next agenda item and put okay. this on the agenda for the committee's consideration in September. Okay, if thank that's, you. Okay. That sounds good to me, unless she's able to connect and you know, later in the meeting today. Okay, thank right. you. Thank you. So we will move on to agenda item number six. This will also be presented by Kay Bork, MAG Transportation Planning Project Manager, as well as the City of Tempe. This item is also on the agenda for action. Thank you, Chair and Committee members. Uh, this next agenda item for the committee's consideration is a third project deferral request from the city of Tempe, and this is for their 8th Street Railroad to McClintock Drive project. And this project originally was awarded um, funding in the 2015 Active Transportation Call for Projects. Uh, Tempe is requesting a third uh, deferral due to major archeological sites, uh, archeological, uh, sites discovered within the proposed project area. Uh, the city was required to conduct more extensive archaeological surveys and develop a remediation plan, which precluded the city's ability to complete the project as scheduled. Uh, their remediation plan was approved in December of 2021, and with the city of Tempe agreeing to incorporate those recommendations into their project design. The first two project uh, deferrals were approved by MAG Regional Council, one in 2017 and one in 2018. And uh, both of these projects deferrals were requested due to the impacts of archaeological finds on the site. Uh, the, MAG pro pro bleh, excuse me. the MAG programming guidelines require that the project sponsor identify and explain the issues that have caused the delay and that the issues must be beyond the control of the agency. Uh, to date, MAG has not had a third project deferral request from a project sponsor. However, while unprecedented, this deferral does, um, <clears throat> it does meet the MAG federal funding programming guidelines. Uh, this concludes my presentation. And if there are no questions, I'd like to turn it over to Chase Wallman from the city of Tempe for their presentation. Great. Uh, thank you, Kay, uh, Madam Chair, members of the Active Transportation Committee. My name is Chase Wallman. I'm a senior transportation planner with the city of Tempe. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity today to present our third deferral request for the 8th Street streetscape 
and uh, multi-use path project. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to get everyone oriented to where this project is within the city of Tempe. So um, our project boundary, our project's along H Street, which is just south of University Drive. It's bounded on the east by McClintock Drive and on the west by Rural Road. Along the project corridor itself, we have numerous um, historically significant sites um, that I'll get into more detail in the next couple of slides. But in addition to those sites, we also have um, Creamery Park, you have land uses that are predominantly multifamily along the project corridor. And then to the west of the project, just across the street of rural, you have the University Drive and Rural Light Rail Station, uh, and then ASU Main Campus. And then finally, this project's also part of Tempe's Bike Boulevard system. Specifically, this project makes up uh, part of the Sprocket route, which is highlighted in green on the right. And um, that route goes um, east-west throughout the city. And then in addition, the um, project's also dissected by a, a future bike boulevard route, which is generally along Dorsey Lane, which is shown here in this blue dashed line. Next slide, please. What we're proposing with this project is one mile of streetscape improvements. So some of these uh, improvements are called, up, called out here. This isn't an exhaustive list, but uh, it gives you an idea of some of the improvements that we're proposing, which includes um, traffic calming, public art, increased landscaping, uh, improved lighting, pedest uh, pedestrian level lighting. Uh, and then we'll be proposing enhanced bike facilities along here, high visibility crosswalks um, and other ADA accessible improvements. In addition to those streetscape improvements, we're also proposing a half mile off street multi-use path. And that would be from Dorsey Lane to Rural Road. Next slide, please. This is showing that picture of that potential off street path alignment. So this, um, this slide is talking about the project timeline. You got a lot of it um, from Kay. But this project was originally programmed for construction in 2017. We kicked off the preliminary design of the project in 2014, and we continued that design up until 2016, um, what we considered to be the 95% design level. So about to wrap up the design. Uh, it was then that our initial environmental consultant um, discovered part of a potentially major archeological site um, within our project area. So after that occurred, the city um, wanted to seek additional consultation with the Tribal Historic Preservation Office and the four Southern tribes. It was from that consultation that it was recommended that the city um, hire a different environmental consultant that had more experience with the Section 106 process, as well as a better familiarity with Ho Ho Com sites, um, as well as other significant features from the pre-classic period. Um, so knowing, knowing that we have to get a new environmental consultant, um, as well as taking that additional consultation into mind for the additional scope in our archeological data testing, we requested that first deferral from 2017 to 2018. Uh, we then, um, once we had that new consultant on board and they began their uh, archeological data testing, uh, it was understood that the magnitude of the discovery, as well as the amount of additional features within the project area, were uh, significantly underestimated by the previous environmental consultant. This required uh, additional surveys, assessments, and consultations from the Tribal Historic Preservation Office for Southern Tribes, as well as ADOT. Um, knowing the additional scope that this was creating, uh, it was anticipated that this would extend well beyond our first deferral timeline, which was originally for 2018. Um, at the time, um, we deferred the project, um, asked for the second deferral uh, as long as, uh, as far out as we could, which was at that time, 2022. Uh, since then, we've obviously made a lot of, lot of progress. Um, we finished the survey, the additional surveys, assessments, and we finalized um, our report. Uh, after that, and as Kay said, in December of 2021, um, we had the remediation plan approved by the Tribal Historic Preservation Office and SRPMIC. 
um, as, uh, and the four Southern tribes. And that remediation plan uh, was in December, 2021. After uh, receiving the, the approval, we got the go ahead that we can continue our final design um, as long as we take into account the recommendations, which some of those included having ongoing monitoring plans, avoiding construction activity in, in the preserved Hohokam uh, public architecture feature, which I'll go into in a later slide, and as well as um, the opportunity to be able to implement interpretive features that would tell the story about the archeological significance within the project area. Next slide, please. So project significance, these are just some of the um, historically significant areas within um, adjacent to 8th Street. So this picture on the left uh, it is showing very early days of Tempe and 8th Street. This is showing the part of the Bankhead Highway System, which was a, one of the first national highway systems. And it went all the way from DC to San Diego going through this part of 8th Street. Um, over to the top left of that screen, you can see um, where present day Four Peaks is and the Creamery Branch, um, Creamery, Creamery Branch Rail creamery and ice factory, which was built in 1892. One of the oldest remaining adobe houses is also along our project alignment that's shown um, in the bottom right. And that was built in 1890. And uh, finally, the McKinley, um, Kirkland McKinney ditch, which is on the bottom right is also adjacent to our project area. And this was one of the first canal systems to bring water um, to the settlement of T Tempe, as well as um, our Hayden flour mill. Next slide, please. This is showing the uh, exhibit for where all the archeological data testing took place. So this extended from Rural Road uh, to Dorsey Lane along the project area with um, numerous trenches. The bottom image in red shows that feature, um, what is called feature seven in here, which is that preserved Hohokam public architecture feature. Um, and then in the black, you'll see the additional, additional trenching areas where additional features um, were found as well. Next slide, please. This is an aerial view um, of the uh, feature seven that preserved Hohokam public architecture feature. Um, this is a, a drone image from above just showing um, the scale and size where you can start to see um, the, the walls of the structure and, and other spaces within that structure. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a, a perspective view, uh, again, of that same area um, that we're talking about just north of our, our 8th Street sidewalk. Next slide, please. Um, this one's actually showing footprints that were preserved um, within the site. You can see some of the outlines outlines there. Next slide, please. Uh, so that was the, uh, obviously the significant feature um, that we found that necessit necessitated additional consultation and our request for our deferrals. So today to reiterate, we are requesting a third deferral to move the construction work phase from 2022 to 2024. Now that we have a approved remediation plan and have given the go ahead to finish up our final design. Next slide, please. The city remains committed to this project to date. Um, the city has spent 1.5 million just on associated archeological work with this project. Um, the city continues to reprogram um, all required local funding and matches uh, and contingency funding to this project within the city's capital improvement program. Um, so that project uh, remains funded within our capital improvement program. Um, and as always, uh, project manager's staff is still assigned throughout um, to complete the project. Next slide, please. Uh, with that, like I said, we just finished that final report and finished the data um, testing recovery analysis section. Um, so now we have given gotten the um, go ahead to finalize the design with those recommend recommendations in place. So we are um, anticipating that work to begin in early 2023. 
uh, if this third deferral is uh, approved. And we anticipate submitting our final plans specifications and estimate in the early part of 2024 and uh, anticipate construction to be in late 2024. Uh, and with that, I thank you for the opportunity to present Tempe's third deferral requests and be happy to take any questions or direct them to Robert Yabez. Really? He's sleeping now. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Chase. Great presentation. Do we have any comments or questions from anyone? I can't help it. It's Christine from Goodyear. This is amazing. Um, what are they going to do with the with that particular area? Is it going to be walled off or moved? No, the proposal was to cover it again. That was what was approved by the uh, the tribes uh, by by the tribes. Sorry. So they're gonna, you're just gonna cover it over and then protect it from whatever the construction is going to, whatever construction is gonna occur, or are you just gonna go around it? Uh, we are, you know, I think the commitment for us is to protect it as much as we can. Uh, you know, I, it would, the thing is, you know, that's why we're doing the redesign to figure out whether we can go above it and see if there's any solutions that we can put in that's approved by the tribes or we, we need to go around it. Uh, we don't know that yet. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. Great presentation, Chase. Thank you. This is Garrett from Mesa. I agree, it's pretty awesome. I, I expected that there might be a glass uh, walkway over it to be part of it. <laughs> That's how I'd like to see it. We'll look into that. Great suggestion, yeah. Robert and or Chase, this is Justin in Fountain Hills. Um, do you know where or if any artifacts that were recovered, where they will be stored and to whom the ownership would be by chance? The, uh, the, the, um, the human remains have been repatriated to the tribes. The, uh, the artifacts are curated on, uh, in the Tempe, uh, Oh God, the uh, Mexican library, I can't remember what it's called now, <laughs> blanking out. But we have a, a museum, Tempe Historical Museum, I'm sorry, uh, has been the repository for the other curated items. Do we have any other questions or comments? Hey Susan, this is Nathan, Town of Gilbert. I did have one. Um, is that I know that they said FY24 to, to postpone it to a push it back to, and then I think I saw it said that the construction was the end of FY24. So I just would want to make sure that they got enough time, or if that's pushing it too close. Um, that was my one question. I think that's the farthest we can push it. Okay. And if I'm we sure. don't build it by 2024, you, we can cancel the project, I guess. I don't, I don't have any more response. Uh, Madam Chair, Justin, this is uh, Patrick Stone. Just to clarify, Justin, they're actually coming in for obligation earlier in the year for than the construction. So they should still be able to obligate it in fiscal year 24, even if the construction goes later into the calendar year. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, I want to make sure they have adequate time. And sometimes I, I mix up obligation and construction deadlines myself. So, uh, well, I think this is a great project. I've been following it for a while. And that's a very good low stress route where I ride quite a bit. And I can't wait to see, you know, if it, if everything moves forward, I can't wait to see the project itself, including the um, interpretive signage. So if we have no other people, I can't, I don't happen to see hands if you have your hands raised. If we have no one else with questions or comments, be glad to take a motion to approve. Um, I've just got one more. You said Robert and Chase that this will be enhanced bike lanes. Are you using the neon green paint? Is that, that how you're gonna uh, approach that? I didn't, I didn't understand, the, sorry. Can you repeat the, the, the green? Yeah, the green thermo? Yeah. The green thermo paint? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we would we would look to we would look to incorporate that. It wasn't um, in our original original design, but now that we are um, uh, finishing up and able to revise the design, I think that's something that we would definitely explore as well as if there's any any space there to add any additional buffer beyond a standard bike lane. Yeah, Susan said it was low stress, so I'm assuming you're not going to need any kind of barrier. But um, I was just curious about that. And Madam Chair, I'm happy to. Um, provide a, um, a motion uh, to approve the third deferral for the city of Tempe's 8th Street Rural Road to McClintock Drive project. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. It sounded like Grant Anderson was the second. Yep. Thank you. We have a motion from Christine McMurdy and a second from Grant Anderson. Kay will do a roll call vote of all members participating. So please indicate how you vote. And I heard some feedback, but I didn't know if someone was trying to ask a question. No, Madam Chair, that was just me and I was gonna offer a second, that was all. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Chair and committee members, I can do roll call. I just wanted to bring to your attention that Patrick Sage is um, present for the meeting. He is just having issues with the sound. And if, um, he may be able to provide a vote by chat, I'm not sure. But I will continue with roll call. Grant Anderson. Aye. Mariel Brown. Yes. Chair Conclu? Yes. Sasha Pachito? Yes. Stephen Esther? Yes. Allison Feliz? Yes. Brandon Forey? Aye. Tara Harmon? Aye. Jason Harris? Aye. Jim Johansson? Aye. Reed Kempton? Aye. Jose Macias? Aye. Christine McMurdy? Aye. Mark Millstone? Aye. Randy Proach? Aye. Kelsey Shatnick? Aye. Garrett Topham? Aye. Justin Weldy? Aye. Nathan Williams? Aye. And Robert Yabez? Aye. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number seven. This will be presented by Kay Bork, MAG Transportation Planning Project Manager. This item is on the agenda for action. Thank you, Chair and committee members. Uh, this next item for Active Transportation Committee action is the fiscal year 2023 MAG Design Assistance Prioritized Project Ranking. The MAG uh, Biennial Unified Planning Work Program budget does uh, include $500,000 in federal funding for the fiscal year 2023 MAG Design Assistance Program. And the current Design Assistance Program allows MAG member agencies to apply for funding for the preliminary design portion of an active transportation project with no local matching funds required. Meg issued the call for projects on June 1st of 2022 with applications due on June the 30th of 2022. We received 10 applications uh, with a total request of $867,080. Meg uh, committee reviewed these uh, projects and scored on August 1st, 2020, 2022. And the uh, Next slide, please. The table summarizes the committee scores and the project ranking. And as the table shows, the top five projects on the list are um, fully funded.
this item does require the um, action by the Active Transportation Committee. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions before we entertain a motion? Can you go back to the table? Do you have a question? No. Are there any, is there anyone else that has a question or needs to see a slide? Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Okay, um, can you please say your name. Justin, Town of Fountain Hills. Oh, Hills. sorry. <laughs> it doesn't okay. show me a name when people speak. I'm sorry. Okay, so Justin has made a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Yeah, this is Reed Kempton. I'll send. Thank you, Reed. Okay, we'll do a roll call, roll call vote of all members participating. Please indicate how you vote. Thank you, Chair and Committee. I will now do roll call. Grant Anderson. Aye. Marielle Brown? Yes. Chair Conclu? Yes. Sasha Pachito? Yes. Stephen Esther? Yes. Allison Feliz? Yes. Brandon Forey? Aye. Tara Harmon? Aye. Jason Harris? Aye. Jim Johansson? Aye. Reed Kempton? Aye. Jose Macias? Aye. Christine McMurdy? Aye. Mark Millstone? Aye. Randy Proach? Aye. Kelsey Chatnick? Aye. Garrett Topham? Aye. Justin Weldy? Aye. Nathan Williams? Aye. Robert Yabez? Aye. And did I miss anybody who is now present? Thank you, and the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Kay. Item number eight, are there any updates or announcements by committee members? Oh, I might have the wrong, do I have the wrong? I have number, item number nine is request for future items and number eight is updates from agencies. Oops, sorry about that. That's okay, but if no one has any updates, please speak um, soon. <laughs> this is Marielle Brown with the City of Phoenix. I just wanna thank you for the kind words at the beginning of the meeting, Kay. And I also wanna say thank you to Mag for helping her for funding that design assistance grant. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other updates or announcements? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to item number nine, request for future agenda items. Does anyone have a request for a future item that we haven't um, given at any past meetings? Seeing none. Madam Chair, oh, this is ahead. Jason Harris, Town Paradise Valley. Uh -huh. There was some email circulating about how to participate in how mid small mid-sized cities can develop an infrastructure grant applications. I'm not sure 
if MAG has been a part of some of those conversations, but it's a pretty broad spectrum of different investment opportunities in the Bipartisan Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Um, didn't know what we could do to educate our members as far as how to assist with some of these grant applications. One I was thinking of, it's called Local Infrastructure Hub. Not sure exactly what that is. Okay. I don't know if anyone else may have interest in that, but starting to see emails about how to participate in future opportunities. I just didn't know if MAG had any opportunities for to assist members in that capacity. Okay, that, that could be added to the agenda. And since a lot of these newer grant uh, federal programs will be for multiple years, that could help all the agencies to see that kind of item. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, this is Patrick yeah. Stone again. Uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Harris. So just a brief update, your timing's actually uh, impeccable. We are actually putting an agenda item on the TRC agenda for this month that will be a grant update. So it'll, it'll, it's a brief agenda item on the consent agenda, but included in the agenda packet will be a listing of all current USDOT grant opportunities that member agencies would be eligible for. Listing the grant name, uh, um, estimated amount of funding, expected number of awards, and then also the posting and closing dates for those grants. So we're looking to probably keep that as a standing item on the on the agenda so that member agencies can be kept in the loop on where the grants are at. Because as, as you noted, they move very quickly. There's quite a few new grants uh, in IIJA and still quite a few left to come out this year. So we just want to keep the agencies posted on that. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick, this is Christine. I'm curious, why is that being presented or appearing at TRC? And is there a way that the same presentation can be to this group? Uh, Madam Chair, Christine, so it's not actually being presented at TRC. It's just an, an item on the consent agenda. So it's just for informational purposes only. However, uh, you know, if the Active Transportation Committee would like a presentation on grant opportunities. I did make a presentation this April at TPC, uh, gave our policymakers an update on the discretionary grants, but I would be more than willing on a future agenda to bring that back to this group. I, I think that would be fantastic. I absolutely agree with Jason that this is, um, it's a it's a really, um, I think it's super helpful to get the kind of guidance that I think MAG can do from their level for cities that are smaller and maybe don't have the kind of technical staff available to them to pull together an application that uh, my experience tells me is very complex. Um, so if, if you don't mind making that presentation to this group, I think that would be fantastic. It would be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other future agenda item requests? Seeing none, I want to give a reminder to committee members that our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, September 20th at 1 o'clock p.m. through teleconference. And with no further business with today's meeting of the MAG Active Transportation Committee, this meeting is adjourned at 1.49 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day.